you're just the go, go, go. You never stop. You never rest. You don't take naps. You don't do restorative or yin yoga. They drive you fucking crazy, right? You're the ones that always say, fuck that. There's not enough. I'm not feeling anything. I got to go. I can't, I can't handle this. I can't lay down. I can't sit here. And you are the people who I want to help today because I was just like you. Hello, beautiful beings of love and light. Mm, Bird's got something to say today too. <laughs> today I want to talk about addiction. I'm an addict. Got to admit it. Uh, we all are addicts in some way and by that I mean we are all recovering from something. So one of the biggest things that I've been addicted to in my life has been exercise. And you know, we use the things that we are addicted to, they don't really matter, but the things that come out as our addictions are the things that we're just using to avoid feeling and processing the feelings that we're avoiding processing emotions that are really hard to feel. And so what, ha what happened to me ultimately was that I came to a point in my yoga life. Previously, I had been working in New York City for 13 years, abusing the gym. I was definitely a gym rat. I was a personal trainer. I was really into health and fitness. Still am to this day, as you know. But the amount of time I was spending in the gym, the ways that I was abusing my body, were never really addressed. So the underlying reasoning for me doing that so that I could feel good, so I could have these feel good chemicals, this dopamine hit, never really left me even after I stopped abusing exercise. I then left the US, yada yada, got my yoga teacher certification and I began practicing yoga. I began meditating and it, it didn't really sink in until I had a mentor. Elizabeth Golder was my mentor in Vietnam at a studio called Nomad Yoga. And it was a beautiful space. And I connected with this woman who's still a dear friend of mine. And what came out of her mentoring me was her observing my practice. And whether or not she knew the addict in me at the time, she was just trying to support me regardless. And what she noticed, among many other things that she pointed out to me that have helped me to this day, was that I was doing Kapalabhati in every single practice, so as a daily practice. So it's a practice that I teach. Um, you often see me like this, holding my arms up, holding the breath, but the pulsating, breathing through the nose in rapid succession, what most of you know as breath of fire, but also engaging the, the lower root chakra and the lower abdominal muscles as you exhale. It's a really powerful breath and it's really good for kapha dosha because it helps to motivate you. It helps to fan the flame of the fire of the Manipura chakra. So it's not that great for pita people and I know you're out there because you're the diehards. You're the Aries people. You're the fire, right? You're probably a fire sign. If you're not Aries, you're one of the other fire signs. And you're just the go, go, go. You never stop. You never rest. You don't take naps. You don't do restorative or yin yoga. They drive you fucking crazy, right? You're the ones that always say, fuck that. There's not enough. I'm not feeling anything. I got to go. I can't, I can't handle this. I can't lay down. I can't sit here. And you are the people who I want to help today because I was just like you. I don't look like it today. I've been doing other things in my life than focusing on working out in the gym and not eating any fat or anything, you know? Um, and I'm 44. Come on, the body, the body just grows. It's not nothing to be ashamed of. I am not a slim, you know, 20 year old any longer. And I also have a food addiction, you know, <laughs> I mean, fuck it, Let's throw it all in. But what I want to impress upon you today is that if you are the type that is pushing yourself so hard every time, you know, you go to, the, whether it's the gym, running marathons, you know, any kind of extreme physical thing that you're doing to yourself, that here is your invitation 
to calm the fuck down. <laughs> to just add in one element of peace, of relaxation, of calm. And especially if you have a breathwork practice, if you're doing pranayama, say you're a yogi and you're one of these diehard yogis, if you go to Bikram, if you go to Power Vinyasa Flow, this is for you, okay? If you feel like your yoga practice is a workout and that's your workout for the day, it's not. But anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> But this will help you because you're probably contributing more to the Agni, the internal fire that you have, and you don't need that. You don't need even more fire if you're full of fire. If you're like so type A, you know, you, you have to get everything done and you freak out if something happens wrong in your schedule, these are, these are symptoms of deeper underlying emotions that need to be addressed, need to be processed, need to be looked at, and it's okay. If you're not ready and you feel anxiety, just listen to me say this stuff. You're like, you're too chill, Beth. I got shit to do. I got places to go. Well, you'll never like any of my videos because they're always way too long anyway. But here's something that might help support you. Just make a slight shift, right? We all have things in our lives that we know we need to change, but it can be really hard to make, you know, to go from the base of the mountain to the top in one day. You know, zero to 60 instantly doesn't work. We can't re overhaul our lives instantaneously. It has to be a gradual process where we work in the things that do work and how they work and what kind of reward system are we giving ourselves and how are we acknowledging how much we're growing. This is the process we can work through in holistic coaching. But just for today, as we say in recovery, maybe try this. So if you are doing a very forceful pranayama, like a Kapalabhati, like a breath of fire, and you're using it to get yourself all like revved up, like, yeah, this is crazy, I'm gonna do this. And you also feel exhausted most of the time, <laughs> then this pranayama can be really beneficial for you. It's also the pranayama that drove me insane at my, the first yoga retreat I ever attended in Costa Rica. Jessica Cruz, she's an Ayurvedic master. We went into class every day and she taught this Nadi Shodana breath work at the beginning of class. So this is how she opened each of our practices. And I was out of my mind going insane. This was before any of my spiritual awakening journey. And so it just drove me nuts. And I didn't see it then, but of course I see it now how beneficial it would have been if I could have just made that shift into taking that on and doing that for myself. So, right, no force, allow yourself to sit, to ground. I always recommend having a block or something underneath of you. Don't force yourself to just sit on the flat ground like you're gonna be like a master yogi if you're fucking outside of your knees touch, who cares? Just give yourself some support sit up on something. I don't care if it's a flat pillow. Just give yourself a little bit more comfort, damn it. <laughs> then we're going to do alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shodana. It's a great way to slow the breath down, to get you very familiar with the two sides of your nostrils. It might sound silly. Take your thumb, place it on the outside of your nostril. Exhale through the open nostril. Pause at the bottom when you arrive there. Just hover in that space and then inhale through the open nostril again. At the top of your inhale, place your pointer finger and your middle finger on your third eye, the space between your eyebrows. Take your ring finger now and close off the open nostril. Release your thumb on the closed nostril and exhale the open nostril side. Come to the bottom of that exhale, hover, and then inhale when you need to. Same side, open nostril. When you get to the top of your inhale, switch your thumb and ring finger and exhale, open nostril. Hover when you get to the bottom before you inhale, same side. Hover when you get to the top and switch your fingers. Exhale, opposite side. 
keep breathing. Keep pausing and hovering at the bottom. Inhaling fully. Pausing at the top, always switching your fingers and sides of the breath at the top. So as you breathe, in and out, each side, or I should say out and in, just feel, sense the temperature of the breath through your nostril. Sense the consistency, or if one nostril is more clogged or congested than the other, if one is more free-flowing. Just notice the texture, consistency, and temperature of the breath. The ease or the restriction. And you can keep going. I invite you. I welcome you. When you're ready to be done, take your final inhale, hover at the top and release your hand down to your lap and exhale through both nostrils. Inhale through both at your own natural pace, right? You're not following what I say and the timing of my breath. You're following your breath. So you breathe in. When you get to your top of breath, you hover before you exhale fully. You come to the bottom of your natural breath and you hover and then you breathe in when you're ready. Notice how it feels to have both nostrils now online, right? They're both working out for you. Notice how your heart space feels. Notice how the back of the heart feels. Notice any thoughts in the mind. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes or the option to place your hands over your eyes, separate your fingers, let a little bit of light in and then swish or melt your hands over your face to come back. How do you feel? It doesn't so much matter what I say this does for me. What matters is what this did for you. So I would love to hear from you. How might you implement this in your life? When, where, and what might that make possible for you if you do? Why would this be important for you? Are you someone who pushes themselves too hard consistently and could really use a break from yourself, from pushing yourself so hard? And do you think this might be a tool that could support that for you? Let me know. <laughs> I'm Beth, holistic coach, somatic trauma experiencer, and I'm here if you would like further support. Here's to calming down and feeling our feelings because that's how we process them. If you would like another way to process your emotions and pranayama similar to this where we take it easy and slow and tune into the sensations of the whole body every Tuesday night, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, PM, I teach either a yoga nidra class or a restorative yoga class based on the astrology of the moon of the day. So you're either lying in Shavasana the entire time. That's it. That's yoga nidra. You just lay there. You don't move. You don't fall asleep. Or I'll be guiding you through some postures and stretches I'm just <laughs> going through a couple of them now but we'll stay in these for about five minutes at a time 
Most of them will be lying on your back or on your belly. You will need pillows for this practice because we will do things like letting our leg go back behind us. And it's just nice sometimes to have a pillow underneath of your leg behind you. This is another one. I'll do it on the other side just as an example to show you. Hmm. We don't do very much movement, especially in Yoga Nidra, but in the restorative class, they're just really juicy stretches. So if you feel completely exhausted or super tight in all of your muscles and you just don't want to give yourself that break day and you're not even sure how to give your muscles that release because stretching isn't that great and maybe you're just not even liking yoga. Come to a restorative class. They're live streamed. They're $10. If you hate it, I'll give you your money back. Okay? Love you. I hope to see you. Mwah. Take care, beautifuls. Feel your feelings. Slow down. <laughs> I feel like I have this thing hanging, but maybe it's just a plant. What's over there? Oh, it's my other piece of hair. <laughs> Wild hair don't care, but do. <laughs>